program, you didn't even have a proper title of the presentation. Uh, it's just mentioned UBU from data saying this is because I'm a sort of last minute invitee to this session. Normally, there should be a more technology related speaker here, wh which what I am not. But the technology guys weren't available, obviously. So this is a more, slightly more general presentation uh, about data side, but I come to, to technology a, at the end. I, I start talking a little bit of, about DOIs and also about publishers. So this is, uh, here you see a table of contents of a journal, which is, by the way, um, high impact factor open access, access journal, nucleic <coughs> acid research, and uh, you have in all these articles you have the DOIs, this is well known now, this is uh, used by almost all publishers now, these DOIs are provided uh, from Crossref, and if you go into the detail of one of these articles, and you go, where well, the DOI is mentioned again, when, then you go into the references and the bibliography list, then you have all these uh, references where it's mentioned Crossref, and de if you uh, clicking on Crossref here means you click, you, cl you, you go to, you link to another article via DOI. Um, this is not standard, standard presentation. In some cases, this is di presented differently. Here it is by clicking on Crossref, but the, um, the, the, pr the principle behind it is that you, this is this, uh, what is called cross-linking, and um, then you get, go to the article, the next article, and you, which has another DOI, and so on. And uh, we think, that uh, in this chain of resources linking, data, se data sets should have the same, uh, should, be, should be linked to in the same way as, as articles, and this is then something that, that uh, is going, starting to happen. Uh, of course, you it can happen to you that here in this particular case, probably this, this, will, this will be uh, the case that you haven't access to the, to the, to the full text for data, this should be slightly different because, for instance, we had uh, something that we, we often remind within data science, this um, publishers, uh, um, Brussels Declaration and STM Publishing, where they say, uh, for instance, that raw research data should be made freely available to all researchers, and um, uh, in particular sets or subsets of data that s are submitted with a with the paper to a journal should, wherever possible, be made freely accessible to others. So this is something that we normally should always remind the publishers this uh, declaration. Uh, stay, staying with publishers, you also know that many publishers um, require, as a condition for publication, to uh, make the underlying data available. Uh, for peer review in particular, and not only, this is from, uh, from Nature, not only they want to make it, uh, to make them, uh, they, they require to make them freely available, but they also indicate precisely what kind of data and which discipline should be put in, in what kind of um, data repository. And then we have something different. This is um, an Elsevier journal, and uh, there you have the, um, a guide for authors, guideline for authors, and there is something called data at Pangea. Pangea is a very important uh, big uh, data center in earth sciences in, um, in Germany, and they have an agreement with, uh, with, with Elsevier in particular, particular about bi-directional linking of, uh, of articles and underlying uh, data sets. Um, so if you have a look here, uh, this is this is made this is explained in the in, in the in the guidelines. Um, SQL data will be citable. You might want to refer them to, to them in your article. Um, in any case, data supplements in the article will be automatically linked, uh, as in the following example. We'll see the example, and then they also also say that DOIs are guaranteed never to change. In fact, what is guaranteed never to change is what what is behind the DOIs. In fact, this is the idea of persistent identifiers. Um, so, and then this is uh, fr still from this, this, the, the same journal. Uh, this is how it, how it works in practice. Uh, you have the, uh, the article and you have a button to click on uh, to go to the data set. And here's even a nice uh, additional application with Google Maps where you can 
uh, see what, uh, what this ha where this happens because it's, we are in the earth sciences here. Um, this is the DOI um, uh, um, homepage, uh, the in uh, International DOI Foundation uh, 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 homepage, in fact, and uh, DOIs are registered by registration uh, agencies. If you want to have a DOI today, you have to contact a registration fee, typically your local uh, what I would say, a uh, registration agency, and DataSci is such an agency. And what, what, could, uh, what can also be mentioned is that DOIs are now, since last year, I think, um, in the, uh, an, ISO, an ISO standard. And you may also know that DOIs are strongly linked to handles, and this is uh, the uh, homepage of the handle system, which is developed by the CN CNRI, uh, which is Cooperation for National Research Initiatives, yes, Cooperation for National Research Initiatives in, 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 the, in the US. And, uh, and in fact, technically it's the same thing. Uh, on the DOI web uh, uh, homepage, they, you can read this. They say uh, at the infrastructure level, DOI names are handles because sometimes there is some confusion about it. Uh, BOIs are opposed to handles, but it's, uh, they're not exactly at the same level. Um, some uh, two or three slides from, um, from a workshop uh, I partic participated in, um, in in 2011, uh, knowledge exchange workshop on uh, persistent identifiers, and uh, handles were presented, DOIs were presented, others as well, but I focus here on handles and, and DOIs, and uh, you can here see a list of, u uh, uh, of users, of clients of, of handles, and IDF is here um, listed, International DOI Foundation, as such a user of handles, and in particular, uh, 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 um, below the IDF, you see the different uh, uh, today existing uh, agencies, there are not so many, uh, Crossref and data science being, being the two main uh, today. And then in this workshop, uh, there was a particular question put to, yes, so this to highlight that IDF is, is a user of handle. It was a particular question on uh, quality of persistent identifiers put to all those who were present, and hand, this is the, the, was the answer of handle. They say use is not actively monitored, and they also say that prefix holders must agree to be good citizens, something like that. And uh, DUI goes much further than that, and at this, uh, to the same question was the DUI will answer uh, to, the, to the question, do you have a policy on quality of persistent identifiers? The answer was yes, this is the raison d'etre of our organization. That's what we are there for, essentially. We uh, want to build this trustworthy infrastructure uh, needed behind, behind this identifier system. Okay, um, oh yes, this is a slide, um, shouldn't be there, it's a French one, um, but nevertheless, uh, this is the French Wiki Wikipedia page for, 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 for DOI, uh, where they um, very usefully uh, point out that first of all, DOIs are in fact special cases of handles, that the DOI has this uh, social, what they call social infrastructure, uh, and uh, would all, should also be mentioned that a d digital object identifier is to be interpreted in the sense of um, digital identifier of objects, not digital, uh, uh, not identifier of digital objects, because um, DOI names may be of any form, digital, physical, or abstract, but this becomes a bit philosophical. Um, but uh, something that should, should, sometimes the question was put to me, do, you, do we have also physical, physical entities? Can we, can we uh, assign DOIs? And the, the answer is yes. Um, now I come to data side. Data side, global consortium carried out by local institutions uh, focused on, on improving this, uh, the, the scholarly infrastructure around data sets, promotion of data sets in the uh, inf uh, information services in particular, um, initially but not exclusively based on, on the DOI system. We, are we have members who uh, register 
uh, handles, of course, but also things like arcs. Um, it started all in 2009 with, a, with just six uh, members, six research libraries. Well, yesterday there was a, uh, some discussion or comments on the future of research libraries. This is an initiative in which research libraries uh, engaged in uh, three years ago. Uh, we were six and today we are um, 22. Uh, 17 uh, regular members um, around the world and uh, five uh, affiliated members, uh, members that just support data site but who don't uh, assign DOIs uh, themselves. Um, the different roles uh, of the data site registration agency on the one hand and the, what we call publishing agents, a generic term for data centers, research institutes, data publishers. Um, in particular, it is important to, 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 to point out that the publishing agents, the data centers, remain responsible for quality assurance uh, storage, uh, they also create the identifiers and they have to create and update the metadata. We, uh, the data site members sign agreements, formal agreements uh, with, with the publishing agents where all these uh, responsibility, responsibilities uh, are, are mentioned. Um, what, type of, what type of data are we talking about? Anything. We have a very broad definition of, 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 of data. Um, here you have some, you have some, uh, uh, some examples. Um, we have, for instance, a, 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 a member who essentially assigns uh, DOIs to gray literature. Uh, but, of course, the, 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 the idea is that uh, the, 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 the ma large majority of objects uh, should be and will be and are already uh, data sets. Um, but in, the, in fact, it's anything, data, data is anything that is a foundation of further research. Data is evidence, in fact. Um, this is the structure. We are a member of the International DOI Foundation. Um, and as such, data site uh, pays a membership fee. And the member institutions, in, uh, in their turn, in their turn, pay a membership fee to data site. Um, and, um, as I said, uh, the data centers have to contact of one of these member institutions to, to, to get DUIs. Um, bridging the gap, here it is uh, the case, that is also your, your, um, your goal, but here it is uh, particular the case for bridging the gaps between publishers and data centers. And um, there is this formal sort of agreement with Crossref, who assigns the DUIs um, uh, for, for article journals, for journal articles, pardon. And they, uh, as it is mentioned here, uh, DataSite and Crossref have committed to the interoperability of the DOIs. And uh, there should be this, what we call, uh, bidirectional linking between uh, data, uh, articles and data. Um, this was formalized or officialized last year by a formal statement uh, between STM, the Publishers Association, and DataSite on best practices on uh, uh, on making data available, uh, on how to cite data, and um, this statement was then uh, also joined by Crossref later. Um, as I said, uh, I, I, we will see an example. So we have here a data set, um, which is a supplement to an article. This is a data set within this Pangea um, data center. Um, Here's the, um, the record of, of, of this data set, data description um, on the Pangea platform. And then you see that is, this is a supplement to an article. The article itself has a DOI. You click on the DOI, you go to the um, article. And uh, on the bottom, on the right, they have this uh, supplementary data bu uh, uh, button. And you can go back by clicking um, to the um, data set. Um, bridging the gap, so to sum up, uh, we, DataSite provides services for, for, for the different uh, uh, players involved, the, the researchers themselves, the data centers, and also the publishers. And then you see a long list of services uh, in forms of uh, specific uh, uh, URLs here, uh, related to, to, to DataSite. And I just mentioned uh, some of them. 
Uh, oh yeah. Also, well, the data side has has uh, a lot of well, a lot of some working groups uh, uh, on specific topics, like for instance the metadata working group, uh, who has um, worked uh, uh, worked to the, for the release of the metadata uh, schema that was mentioned yesterday. Um, metadata store. This is this is uh, the, the the DOIs have ca can only be created, minted, as we say, together with metadata. Um, we have a limited number of uh, uh, mandatory fields in our scheme, and as we heard yesterday, for the, for the need, for the purposes of open air plus, uh, this would have, will have to be changed. Um, although in principle you, you would, as, as far as I understood, uh, uh, use uh, this, this metadata scheme. Um, this is more formally an interface for data centers. In fact, uh, a well-organized data center uh, does not uh, is, is rather uh, autonomous in, in creating their, their, their DOIs. They just link to this to this platform. We are just giving them the, uh, an access code, a uh, login, and um, then they c can create the DOIs and they p they they upload the metadata, and this can then be. Um, so these metadata can be searched uh, for. This is the French interface. In fact, this what we call MDS, metadata store, is a kind of central portal allowing access to the metadata from all registered objects. In particular, it's, um, it can be harvested via uh, OI, OI, OAI PMH. Um, so this is the, this, you find this, the, the, the schema on the, um, on the website. Um, we are at version 2.2, but the version 2.3 will come out in the, in, in the coming months, I think. You have also the XML. This is the, uh, the document uh, you, can, uh, you can visualize on the data side, on, on the website. This is the XML version that you can see as well. And this is um, the, the search interface. We have a simple search here. We have also an advanced search, and I, as an example, I looked for, for the, in, from the advanced search, I looked for, uh, I looked for Minio, and I wanted to see a data set, not uh, because the general resource source type can be things like text, or video, uh, rep, uh, uh, yes, uh, databases, and um, we have general resource type, and we also have resource type, which is a bit more specific. Uh, you can have thesis and, and report and things like that. But I wanted to see a data set, and I saw just one result. Um, and then if you click on the DOI here, you go, in fact, to the landing page of this data set, and this was a data set uh, uh, hosted by the UK uh, Data Archive, and they uh, received their DOIs from the British Library, and then you can download, if you have the, the right to download. Of course, talking about open data, we always encourage all our uh, data centers, all our customers, to make the, their data as open as possible. But uh, this is not always the case, and at least there should be some information on how to get the data. This is something that is made precise in, in, our, in the contracts that we sign with, with data centers. Um, this is uh, some information about harvesting that you find on our web website. And then something that, this is becoming slightly um, te uh, techni more technical, uh, data site content resolver. It's a service for displaying data site metadata in different formats. And uh, uh, if you make a search, you, you see all the, the formats that, in principle, are, are, are available. And uh, this can be done, this is uh, also done by Crossref and even in cooperation with Crossref. Uh, this can be, be done either by something of, that is called content negotiation, uh, this becomes a bit, really a bit technical, documentation that you have on, on the bottom is about that, or by using the DOI proxy. The DOI proxy is the DOI formulation as an URL, uh, the, the form you see here. It's a sort of gateway between the handle server system and the HTTP. And you can put in a URL uh, of this form and then uh, uh, specify the type, the MIME uh, type, 
which is the, 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 the internet format of the, of the resource, and then you can go directly to the uh, data, uh, to the metadata in the requested uh, format. So uh, I have two slides about explaining more, more in detail how content negotiation works, but I think I have to skip them. These are the slides, so I, I go, don't go into the details here. And uh, just to mention that we have a, also a list of repositories of, of research data within our, our services. And you may know that um, Thomson Reuters has uh, created a launch data citation index. And they started, they all want to work with data site. They started to, to, uh, to all these uh, repositories that were listed uh, in, on our uh, uh, website to, to get in touch with as, as a starting uh, point. Um, ORCID and DataCite work together in a European project called ODIN. It's about um, um, connect information across multiple services and infrastructures for scholarly communication. Or, uh, ORCID is the uh, author or contributor uh, uh, identifier uh, uh, initiative. And uh, we are also um, involved, data site is involved in a group, in a co data group uh, on data citation standards and, and, and practices. Co data was mentioned yesterday by Jeffrey Bolton, uh, together with ICSU, as one of the international bodies who can, could possibly do much advocacy work for, for, for open data. Uh, and I think this was almost the last one. Yes and we had just a colorful slide with all the logos of our current members. Thank you.